Hi, I'm Brett. Today I've got another video update on the direct injection FA 2 litre WRX engine. And this is the engine beside me. And on our previous videos, we've spoken about the difference between this engine and the earlier EJ series 2 litre engine. We've spoken about the difference with the uh, piston design and things like that. So what we're going to do in this video is talk about what the engine looks like as it starts going back together. And one of the interesting things is um, from the front of the engine, you'll notice it's got chain drive whereas the previous EJ series engines have got a belt drive. And of course, the theory is this chain should last effectively, outlast the engine. And you can see here, these are the mechanisms that guide the chain when it's under tension. Um, this one at the bottom is actually um, tensioned up by the um, oil pressure, which puts tension on the chain on this side. And you'll notice there's a alternate one on the other side as well, because it's important that these chains stay tight at high RPM when the engine's running. So the variable cam control on the inlet and the exhaust side can stay in sync because that's one of the one of the features that the engine ECU does is it compares the uh, camshaft timing from both sides to make sure the engine is operating correctly. So sometimes you can actually get a fault code if they're out of sync. So as I mentioned, these are the variable cam control units and these are a oil pressure operated mechanism that allows the engine ECU through, through high pressure oil through the center of the camshaft to advance and retard the camshaft both on the inlet side and the exhaust side when the engine is actually running. You can't see the journals and the galleries where the oil goes into here, but it is, it is controlled through the engine ECU and oil pressure. And um, you can see here, this is the crossover pipe for the water which connects one side of the engine to the other from the side which then connects to the radiator. But one of the things I wanted to talk about now, which is rather interesting, and you'll notice I've left this side on because we haven't put the inlet manifold on yet. This is the riser that can, connects to the inlet manifold. And you can see it's got a split design, almost like the early model Subaru EJ series. We've had a variable control on this type of butterfly for the TGV or tumble generator valve. But on the FA series engines, uh, we've left this one off, but you'll notice this part here is actually removable because this is an insert that goes into the machine part of the aluminium housing on the intake of the actual engine itself. And you can see right down inside there, if you look carefully, you can see the back side of the valves, um, which then lead into the combustion chambers. Now, one of the other things is being a direct injection engine, you might say, well, where are, the, where are these parts? So we have fuel comes in from the fuel pump out of the fuel tank that goes into this component here, which is the the high pressure pump which is run off the back of the um, a fitting on the back of the camshaft goes through extremely high pressure into this rail and of course into this rail as well and you can see just down inside here is the location of the the direct injectors as well and these are then fired by the ECU and these are directing fuel directly into the combustion chamber the early model engines were port injectors where they fired down the throat to the back side of the inlet manifold, inlet manifold onto the back of the valves. Whereas on this engine being direct injection, that's where the fuel is inserted into the combustion chamber to create the firing operation engine. And remember, if you've got a FA series engine in a BRZ or a Toyota 86, they're both direct injection and port injection as well because that's the early derivative of the engine. Whereas the current model WRX engine, MY13 onwards, which is this um, FA series engine here, and you can tell by the casting on the block, FA20, um, that's the derivative of the block design itself. And there's a whole heap of other codes you can see on the top here. Um, including the casting codes under my hand, I'm not going to show you because this is the engine number of the customer who owns the engine. But you'll see Subaru puts lots of little codes all over the place, including these QR codes here. Um, and you'll notice there's also QR codes on the side of the block here. And there's also other locations such as here. And all these parts are part of the manufacturing process of the engine by Subaru. And now that it's going back together, you can also see some of the other components that we're putting together as well, such as the water pump, because the water pump is driven differently to the EJ series engine. On um, the Subaru EJ series engine, the water pump is driven off the cam belt. On the FA series engine, it's pretty obvious it's a lot different. So the next step is we'll start putting the engine cover back on the timing chain assembly. We'll put the rest of the engine back together and we'll show you, show you more what it looks like. Um, Make sure you check out our other videos, which are really handy and information on the mods inside this engine. And then when it gets back in the car, we'll do a final tune to show you what that looks like as well. So make sure you check out our website at mrttuned.com.au. If you're looking for parts, 
It's mrtperformance.com.au. But of course, if you're somewhere in Australia, we do custom remote tunes through our partner network, no matter where you are. So you can rely on our technology and peace of mind. And of course, um, you can contact us through Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. But for today, my name is Brett Middleton. Thanks for watching.